If it really comes down to it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like, it does not matter. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to share 10 things I wish I would have known in my 20s. I'm going to let you guys in on the secrets so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. Make sure to hit the lips like like button and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any video that I post and let's jump right into the video also this is an attempt at me decorating my background for the holidays so the very first thing that I wish I would have known in my 20s is that the only competition that you should have is yourself okay because especially with social media we all fall into this trap of like comparison but no like why would you compare yourself to someone that doesn't have the same like life path than you have that doesn't have the same goals that you have that doesn't have the same past that you have that doesn't have the same upbringing like literally everything about them is different and you're comparing yourself to a person that you just you can't compare yourself to other people because you don't know what they've been through you don't know how they were born how they were raised the help that they had so you may think like things are unfair but you have no idea we all see like this perfect polished image of people online but you have no idea what some people have to go through to get to where they are every day try to be better than what you were yesterday and i know that sounds so cliche but literally when you are your own competition you get better and better and you up level every day my second tip i wish i would have started in my 20s is use more preventative anti-aging devices for my skin i take a lot of good care of my skin you guys know this on my channel i talk a lot about skincare first of all your skin is the largest organ that you have the way you look in terms of aging has a lot like most of it has to do with your skin right and a lot of people like tell me like lisa you don't even look like you're in your 30s or like when i mention my age people are like what i thought you were like in your 20s and this is because i'm very careful with my skin i really take care of my skin i have friends who literally worship the sun like they are in the sun 24 7 and they look a lot older than i do the sun is good for you vitamin d like we all need vitamin d but please take care of your skin please do preventative anti-aging because 10 years from now you will look 10 years younger and people will come up to you and be like what are you doing you're literally your skin is like low so i recently discovered radio frequency devices that you can use at home and I wanted to take a second today to thank our sponsor, which is Amira, which is this amazing device here. It's a little baby here. You can treat yourself to tighter, firmer, and lifted and smoother skin from the comfort of your own home. Good anti-aging regimen should be started around the age of 25 because that's when we start to lose collagen in our, in our bodies and in our skin. Um, and also doctors, like I tried a lot of doctors' treatments and first of all, they're time consuming. They're very, ex sometimes you need to have downtime if you do laser. They're very expensive. And they can also be painful. And obviously skincare plays a huge role in this. But like I said in my last video, skincare just penetrates like to the upper layers of your skin. So we can't really do much about like the sagging that occurs and the like, uh, loss of firmness that occurs for everybody with aging. What radio frequency does, it literally heats up the skin. Don't worry, it will not burn, it will not hurt whatsoever. You also have like levels on um, the device so you can start very minimal and it literally uh, heats the skin like the deeper layers of the dermis which then triggers your skin to actually produce more collagen and more tightness and more firmness you have two modes on this one is firming and lifting and one is for wrinkle fading and anti-aging i like to do this either in the morning to depuff my face it literally depuffs my face uh, in a matter of minutes or i like to do it as my evening skincare 
I put on some relaxing music or I listen to a podcast and I just literally like use it on my skin. It's super relaxing. You can also use it for your jaw, for tightening in your jaw. I've been using it for about a month now, uh, along with the device that I shared in my last video. So make sure you go check that out. Like, I don't know if you can tell my skin is like just really, it's like glowing and it looks like I got Botox on my forehead, even though I don't. Um, as you can see you can see the immediate before and after here i look a lot fresher obviously results will show a lot more over time over the months that you're going to be using this but i did see results right at, at the beginning of using this what i love most about this is that it is a four in one device so you get radio frequency which helps with collagen boosting and wrinkle reduction sculpting function with helps with lifting and firming the skin and also helps to depuff your face in the morning and i like to film in the mornings and i don't want to have like come on here with a puffy face then it also has a red led light which helps with um improving skin microcirculation and skin brightening it also has infrared which helps to revitalize this even the skin's deepest layer and enhances skin elasticity i love this device so so much i'm gonna link the product down below they gave me a discount code lisa so you can get it at the best price possible it's never too late to start an anti-aging routine even if you're in your 30s now in your 40s and your 50s you can still start the skin has our bodies have a natural ability to regenerate itself my third tip that i want to share that i wish i would have had and known in my 20s is protect your energy your energy is sacred. Stop giving your energy and your power away to people that don't deserve it. I have such strong boundaries with myself, with other people, even with my phone. Like guys, apart from work, right? If I use Instagram for work, if I use YouTube for work, apart from work, I do not spend more than five minutes a day on Instagram. I don't because there's so much like, overstimulation we live in a world where there's just like so much overstimulation every single day and i notice that the days where i'm like getting sucked into the social media world it just completely drains me it distracts me i cannot stay focused on my goals and what i want to create in my life my energy is sacred and when you start to show up like that people will start to give you the respect that you deserve because no one can abuse you unless you allow them to. And I had to learn that in my early 20s because I come from a lot of, like I had abuse in my childhood, I had abuse in my um, early 20s, and I had to really learn that no, no one gets access to my energy. My energy is sacred. Like naturally, I give so much of myself that I only want to give that to the people that are respecting my energy. And that only starts with you because the world will only mirror your beliefs. If you believe that you aren't worthy or that you let everybody walk all over you or that you let people just kind of dictate your life, what you should do, what your belief system should be, that's what's going to happen. Like you need to set the boundary with yourself and with other people and say like no more. How someone reacts once you set a boundary, that is not your responsibility. I know for people who have been, uh, like who have grown up, especially with, with repetitive abuse, it's like we feel that we have to, that we're responsible for everybody's pain, that we're responsible, and then we overgive of ourselves, and then we are so drained because we think, oh, this person got mad at me. I must have done something wrong. Like you always take credit for other people's emotions. Like people are mad at you and you think it's your fault. But no, everybody has their own responsibility to the way they react. And again, if you set a boundary and that person person lashes out at you for setting a boundary, that's their problem. That is not your problem. That is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to take care of yourself first. In a plane, when the plane is crashing, you cannot help other people if you don't have your oxygen mask on first. Put your own mask on first and then you can help other people, okay? But, but if you're going to try to help other people without even having oxygen, without even being able to breathe, they're going to pull you down with you. You're going to die with them. And who's going to benefit from that? No one. I wanted to share a book. I'll 
put it right here. It's called a setting boundaries. You know what? Let me just, let me just, that's what Google is for. Setting boundaries with difficult people by Alison Bot. Okay, I don't want to butcher her name. Um, it's a really, really good book. She has a lot of books on setting boundaries. Uh, so I highly recommend okay, that. So the fourth tip kind of builds on my last tip is to stop apologizing for things. Like just stop, stop. An example I can give you is you show up late to an appointment and you're like, sorry I was late, sorry I'm late, I was in traffic. Is it your fault that there was traffic? No. So why then are you apologizing for the traffic? It's not your fault. You couldn't have known. Our words are agreements in the universe. And as above, so below. Our words are super, super powerful. Whatever you declare and decree is literally what is going to happen. So what you're doing when you're basically over apologizing or over accommodating for people is you're taking on stuff that isn't even yours to carry. Stop carrying the whole world on your shoulders. It's not yours to carry. Just let it go. Let it go. Like you will feel so much lighter and so much freer when you know that you can't control everything. Not everything is your fault. There are there are things that are out of your power and that's okay. My next tip, I think we're at the fifth tip now. Start speaking your truth. No matter what people say, Speaking your truth is so important. You don't have to go all crazy or get all angry or get all mad, but denying yourself your own truth because you're afraid of how people are going to react. Let's say, for example, you're gay, okay? And you're not like you're not coming out because you're scared of what people will think. Let's say you have psychic abilities, right? This was my case a lot. I would hide that. Let's say before coming to this earth, your soul was like, in this lifetime, I want to learn how, like one thing that I want to work on amongst others is to speak my truth and to not be afraid to be who I am, like really who I am at the core to show that to the world. Speaking your truth is so, so, so important because there are people that there are people on this planet that cannot step into their destiny unless you step into your truth. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that everybody has a role here to play. If your role is to help other people step into that power, and you're not gonna do that because you're scared of showing up online, you're scared of speaking your truth, well, these people, yes, maybe they will find other people, but no one is like, you have a unique essence about yourself and watering that down just because you're afraid to offend people. You came here to let your light shine into the world. So do that and stop being afraid of what people care because honestly, most of the time people don't really care. They're so busy with their own lives. Like they don't have time to think about whether you have imposter syndrome or not, okay? So the sixth one is what I wish I would have known in my 20s. Don't waste your energy on boys, okay? And I'm specifically saying boys in a sense that men who aren't men yet, like if you find the love of your life and if you are with a partner that respects you and values you and treats you like the queen that you are and you both like have this amazing relationship together right obviously no relationship is perfect but that is great that is amazing but don't waste your energy on boys don't waste your energy i don't care if he's a 10 i don't care if he has abs i don't care if he's a 12 i don't care if he's successful if he is full of red flags let it go. I can pick up red flags immediately. So I have learned to tap into my intuition that I could literally just see a picture of a person and I could tell you a lot about them. You know, when I'm getting to know someone, I'm not trying to investigate. Those things just come to me. Like that's information that I can read that's like in their field. Don't waste your energy on getting heartbroken. I see all these people make videos about like, oh, 
reels about like oh how he's having so many red flags how he's breaking your heart yeah but you're also letting that in like if you have strong boundaries and you're like this is what i accept this is what i want in a man if he doesn't have that why are you continuing to talk to him like why are you even giving him the attention of the day and i know a lot of people are lonely they're bored you know they want company and that's probably why they're entertaining things that aren't for them but honestly life is so short don't spend it with the wrong people because you're gonna end up being hurt and you're gonna end up having to pick up the pieces. I bet you 100% that there were red flags right from the beginning that you saw, but you still choose chose to ignore them. Or you still chose to like tell yourself, oh, let's just give him a chance. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. That used to be me. Oh, I wanna give him the benefit of the doubt. No, honey, people show you who they are. People show you, pay attention. Stop talking about yourself, be a good listener. You don't have to share everything about yourself. Let them do the talking, ask the right questions. Also, if you sleep with someone, again, every, you do you, every, like I really don't care what you do with your life, that's your business. But what I wanna share is that when you sleep with someone, you create a soul tie you're now connected to that person. You're now absorbing their stuff and sleeping with someone is more than just a physical act. It's a very spiritual act. So be careful who you intermingle with. Number seven, life is what happens to you while you're busy planning the future. I can't stress this enough. Is it important to have goals, to be ambitious, to work towards your goals, absolutely. But don't get so lost in chasing an illusion of the future that you're not here in the present moment. Because like I said, life goes by so fast. One day you'll wake up and you'll be like, I just spent the last decade in my office, in front of my computer. Like I just, I really didn't live know a lot of successful people some of them are very very happy some of them are downright miserable because all they do all they care about is making money all they care about is status and success and their life is not balanced like life is all about balance so make sure you take time to live in the present moment because the truth is you never have any other moment than the now the now the eternal now is all we have. So stop living in a past or chasing the future. Practicing mindfulness and being present and working on my nervous system is something that has really changed my life and the quality of my like day-to-day, -day, everyday life. There's so much more joy and lightness and happiness when we're able to tap into the present moment. If you guys want me to do like a video to go more in depth about that, let me know down. Number eight. People don't have to like you. You don't even like everybody, so why are you expecting everybody else to like you? It's not even logical. People are allowed to have preferences. Not everybody's gonna like you, and that is okay. I used to be such a people pleaser, and in trying to be a people pleaser, I just became like a chameleon that morphed into whatever the person in front of me wanted of me and it's like no why am i using all of this energy to try to please someone i'm not even sure that i like like it doesn't even make sense right so we goes back to being your full authentic self people don't have to like you and that's okay number nine let's talk about money make sure you invest your money okay make sure you learn things about finances that aren't taught in school like we're not taught in school how to manage money i'm like why is that even a reality like why are we not taught these things in school these are things that are so 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 important they can literally make or break your bank so make sure you get financially literate because a lot of people are so financially illiterate, illiterate. I wish I would have had a mentor or, or a figure that I could look up to. Luckily, I'm naturally very good like with my spendings and with money. I'm Capricorn, like Capricorn is good with money, okay? But as far as knowledge goes, like 
I had no idea how to do like most of these things. I had no idea how to have my own business, like how, how to handle all of that stuff. I had no idea that I could invest, like I'm talking like over a decade ago, okay, before social media. I had no idea that I could invest my money and like make money while I sleep. So all like what you do now, what you do now, like the day-to-day -day steps, the habits, and even your spending habits, and the way that you invest your money in things is so, so, so important if you want to create wealth. I'm not saying that investing is the only way to create wealth, because it's not, um, but it's a big part. Like Every wealthy person on this planet has some type of investment. Get a financial advisor. Talk to people who are very knowledgeable in finance. Like I always wanna learn more. Have people given me bad advice before? Yes, so always use your own discernment, but invest your money as soon as you can. Like literally as soon as you can, make sure you invest it because your money is gonna have money babies and it's all gonna to start to pay off years and decades from now. Okay, my last tip and one of the most important ones, like if you were to leave this video with just one thing, it would be this one. Stop making such a big deal out of things because most of the time, it's not a big deal. Like most of the time, ask yourself when something happens that like really takes you off track. Maybe someone said something about you that really threw you off. Maybe someone cut you off in traffic. Maybe you had got an unexpected bill to pay, right? And that really threw you off. Um, ask yourself, is this going to matter a year from now? Is this going to matter 10 years from now? If it's not, then why are you spending your energy and thoughts on it, right? It really, really doesn't matter. A lot of the things we obsess about every single day, it really, like, if it really comes down to it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like, it does not matter. And I think that's something that you start realizing with age because honestly, life does not get easier, spoiler alert. You just get better at handling things and you like the way i'm able to have so much peace and obviously like i get reactive too i react every day but it's like taking your mind back and being like centering yourself and being like no i'm not gonna go there i have the power to choose my own thoughts i will not let that situation take me off track i will stay in my center and so it's like a mental discipline that you need to have, but it's really gonna change the way you show up. And it's also going to help you preserve your own energy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna share some things you wish you would have known earlier, um, leave it down below in the comments. I love you guys and I'll talk to you soon.